Roads have always been synonymous with human progress. They carry the lifeblood of human activity to all parts of a community or nation. No matter when or where they are built, they serve multiple purposes of exploration, conquest, communication and trade. 2000 years ago, the network of highways known as the Silk Route vitalized the entire Asian region. It was on this road that silk, spices, tea and exotic animals were traded with Europe. Sukhapa rode further on elephant back through Burma and into India in the 13th century. There in present-day Assam, Sukhapa founded the kingdom of the Ahoms. Around the same time, the Italian adventurer Marco Polo traveled the Silk Route in the other direction on his way to the Chinese court. In the 1940s, a section of the southern part of this ancient trading route was upgraded and used again. This time, it was not for trade or conquest, but for defense. Between 1937 and 1942, Japanese armies had overrun China and threatened the borders of British-administered India. The Allied forces of Great Britain and the United States maintained a supply of men, arms and ammunition to the struggling Chinese. But by April 1942, the advancing Japanese army had reached Lashio and the crucial lifeline to China was cut off. At this time, American troops in Burma were under the command of Joseph Warren Stilwell, a grim-faced general popularly known as Vinegar Joe. Stilwell, who spoke fluent Chinese, was appointed to head the defense of China. Stilwell proposed that the Allied forces retake Burma. He planned a new alternate road from Lido on the borders of Assam to Mongyu in northeastern Burma to link up with the old Burma road. That old road would then be upgraded and remetalled to support supply convoys all the way to Kunming. The land route to China would thus be restored. Stilwell was given command of American and Chinese troops in Burma and India. For two years, between 1943 and 1945, Allied soldiers and laborers toiled through virgin jungle to build the road. Completed just six months before the Japanese surrendered in August 1945, it was a 1,079-mile marvel of engineering. Stilwell was recalled to the U.S. in late 1944, but the road bears his name to this day. A journey down the Stilwell Road today underlines its economic potential. These are the tranquil tea gardens of Lido. This typically northeastern Indian town lies near the border with Myanmar. A present-day visitor would find it hard to believe that in 1942, this quiet place was the site of a huge and important military installation. But in terms of transport, Lido is the natural gateway to India from the east. It is connected by road, rail and air to major hubs in India. The airfield at Lido, long since closed, was once a constant roar of C-47 aircraft taking off for China laden with military supplies. During the war, this coal mining town was the easiest and the most convenient way of getting troops and supplies to the Indian border and into China. It was here, therefore, at Lekhapani that General Stilwell started to build his road. Today, Lido is better connected than ever. Two all-weather national highways link it to Bangladesh. The Lido railhead leads to the Indian Railway's broad gauge network throughout India and up to Bangladesh. There is a national waterway on the Brahmaputra River. Lido is connected to an all-weather airport at Dibrugarh and an international airport under construction at Guwahati will soon link it to the outside world. And yet today, despite reminders of its past importance, it is just another neglected town in the backwaters of Assam. If the Stilwell Road were reopened, Lido would be the easiest, most convenient point from which to move commercial goods and tourist traffic between India, Myanmar and China. From Lido, the Stilwell Road winds for 38 miles to the border with Myanmar. The faces of the people in this area reflect a common ethnicity with the people of southwestern China. For centuries, they have intermarried with Kachin Burmese and Singpo Chinese. Through 750 years of rule by Ahom kings, 
Their features, clothes and cultural habits are strikingly similar to those of their neighbours. Although years of disuse have taken their toll on the road, it was never easy to maintain. The men who worked on it struggled against constant hazards. The monsoon rains of 1943 swept away the roadbed and buried bulldozers in mudslides. Malaria claimed many lives. Between Jairampur and Nampong, hundreds of roadside graves testify to the men who gave up their lives building what came to be grimly called the Man a Mile Road. In what capacity did you work on the road? And uh, you mean the steel wheel road, you mean? I, as a uh, um, MS engineer, junior engineer, say, of you should say. What year was it? 1943. What say? do you remember oh. during the building of the road? Oh, yeah, I see. At that year, it was heavy rain, you see, continuous uh, more than uh, six months, just full of mud and everything. Uh, we got a hell of a lot of trouble there for due to construction, no communication, no thing of the sort, like that. And uh, especially, I walked from the uh, company to up to uh, Pangsupas and some uh, base station, say, Hellsgate and uh, Nampong, Namyong, like that. Who were the persons who were responsible for building the road? Oh, who were they in the American is the uh, CRE 121 uh, is responsible for that. They're, and American people, American, actually American soldiers are used to construct the road. I work for the American people, so American linguists and American divers all. How long did it take to construct the road from Lekhapani to Pangsapa? Actually, exactly I can't say, but we have to leave that work. About how long? But uh, what is, uh, say, it is, say, six months. The checkpoint of the Assam rifles at Nampong is the last Indian outpost before the border with Myanmar. Beyond lie the thick jungles, which extend into northern Myanmar. The road from here is little more than a rough track. A few miles beyond Nampong, the road comes to an abrupt end on the indo myanmarese border at an altitude of 3,727 feet. This is the mist-veiled Pangsao Pass, whose name means that which cannot be seen. It took almost an entire year to build the first 38 miles of the Stillwell Road up to the Pangsao Pass. After that, the rate of construction leapt up to one mile a day, despite a hundred miles of mountain ranges. But 40 years of post-war upheaval in Myanmar has left little time for maintenance. The northern Kachin state, in political flux for so long, is relatively underdeveloped. As a result, a 140-mile stretch of the Stillwell Road from the Pangsao Pass up to Tanai no longer exists. The missing road between the Pangsao Pass and Tanai was built on unsurveyed territory. Allied troops cut a rough road trace along the jungle footpath used by refugees fleeing from Burma into India. They work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For each mile of construction, 100,000 cubic feet of earth had to be removed. The road climbed as high as 4,500 feet over steep grades, making hairpin bends over 200 feet drops. 55 years of neglect has caused the stretch to virtually disintegrate. Many of the culverts built over streams have been washed away, broken or destroyed. Whereas most of the Stillwell Road could simply be upgraded to be made motorable, the missing 140 mile portion would have to be rebuilt. It is the only missing link in a road network that otherwise connects northeastern India directly with China and Singapore. The road re-emerges in motorable condition at Tanai, 80-odd miles before the town of Michina. Michina lies at the 250-mile mark. It is the Kachin state capital, and the busy market here is an important point of trade and commerce on the Stillwell Road. The 9,000 inhabitants, mostly converted to Christianity, 
display a colorful variety of Kachin clothing and custom. The tribal Kachin's intimate knowledge of the jungle made them invaluable wartime guides. Michina lies just below the beautiful confluence of the two tributaries that form the Iravadi River, the watery highway that bifurcates Myanmar for 1,000 miles to the Bay of Bengal. The bridge that spans the Iravadi at Michina today is a little south of where the wartime pontoon bridge was. That bridge, built in 1944, was the longest pontoon bridge in the world, but was dismantled two years later as an obstruction to river traffic. When the Stillwell Road was complete, it spanned 10 major rivers and 155 secondary streams, totaling 5 miles of bridge. The original alignment of the Stillwell Road is not entirely clear. There is also a 230-mile road from Michina to Tengchong and on to Kunming, along what was called the North Burma Road. But the present-day alignment runs 122 miles southeast from Michina to Bhamo. This part of the Kachin state is mountainous terrain, crisscrossed with rivers. Parts of the stretch are in very poor condition. Rain turns the red earth of the area into gluey mud. Yeah, 我们就一直好一点,我们的医院,一直这里有医院打的很,有西南人就说医院打的很,所以就不能一直没有,有的少了。您说这个路上有没有哪一段特别难走的? 这个是难走法 900 miles upriver from the mouth of the Iravadi, Bhamo is an important shipping town in northeastern Burma. It is said to be named after the Assamese princess, Bhamo Adio, granddaughter of Sukhapa, who married a Burmese king and died here. The Tarpin River flows here from China. All of the construction in Bhamo is new. This agricultural town, once the third largest city in Burma, was almost completely destroyed during the war. An inscription here records the name of an engineer who worked on the road. The old airfield is now used as a graveyard. But the Stillwell Road still connects Bhamo to the rest of the country's road network. About 70 miles further on, in the Shweli River Valley, lies the little town of Namkham. It was famous during the war for the American Missionary Hospital set up by Dr. Gordon Seagrave, universally known as the Burma Surgeon. Namkham reflects the region's cultural heritage and attracts droves of Chinese tourists. Between Namkham and Musei, the mountainous Kachin country gives way to more open Shan territory. 
The hills here have been stripped of the famous Burma teak, which for years made for lucrative trade with China. Rice fields have replaced the forests. The faces of the Shan people, a proud and independent community in modern Myanmar, reflect centuries of intermarriage with the Chinese. The Stilwell Road runs 15 miles southeast to Muse, in fairly good condition. Registers at the Muse checkpoint are filled with the names of Chinese traders who flock to these border markets. About a hundred containers of Chinese goods are checked here daily. Myanmarese officials hope to see the volume grow. Myanmar and China have a long history of trade, but the difference between the two sides of the border is striking. On the Myanmarese side, the Stilwell Road is little more than a track, narrow and in disrepair. Along the way, there have been few signs of industrialization or development. Grand Golden Gates separate Myanmar from the healthy economy of China. The Stilwell Road runs past Muse's gates into the Chinese border town of Ruili, which thrives on the lucrative trade in jade. A new investment zone has been set up at Ruili to service trade with Myanmar. China's southwestern Yunnan province is peopled by ethnic Dai, Bai, Yi, Singpos and Han Chinese among others. Buddhist pagodas dotting the landscape reflect a faith common to people from Assam to China. Along the really winding border of 20 miles, Myanmarese and Chinese enjoy cordial relations and heavy trade traffic. The Stilwell Road runs northeast for 145 miles from Ruili to the city of Baoshan. Amid these spectacular hills is a largely agricultural economy. This is rice, corn, tobacco, fruit and tea country. As in many such economies, women perform a large part of the labor. Peaceful mustard fields have grown over the bloody wartime history of Baoshan, which was a Japanese stronghold before it was wrested back by Allied troops. Although agriculture plays a dominant role, Baoshan is beginning to industrialize. Yunnan, with its rich natural resources, is now concentrating on infrastructural development. A new expressway is being constructed alongside the old Stilwell Road from Kunming to the border at Ruili. An enormous construction effort is on, cutting through mountains, propping up the road with massive concrete pillars and connecting hillsides. The road is very rough while the work proceeds, but when it is complete, this six-lane toll road will make travel as smooth as butter up to the Myanmar border. From Baoshan, the North Burma Road runs 130 miles west through enormous mountains. It goes through Tangchong, a city that lies on seismically active land babbling with hot springs. Although this road is in poor shape, trucks carrying dredges ply it on their way to Myanmar. They cross Guyong near the Myanmar border and go on to Michina. Even Tangchong County, miles up from the Stilwell Road, has profited from the superb highway. The new expressway from Kunming has already been completed for 205 miles up to Dali, 119 miles northeast of Baoshan. Dali is an ancient fortress town on the old southern Silk Route. Dominated by a massive snow-capped peak and the distinctive three pagoda structure on the site of an old monastery, this city was once the political, economic and cultural center of Yunnan. Dali has been called the Switzerland of the Orient for its natural splendor. The ear-shaped Erhai Lake, dramatic mountains and rolling mists frame of vibrant cultural heritage. The brightly clad Bai people, Dali's largest minority, have preserved their culture for over a thousand years. Their March festival, one of ten fairs celebrated annually, is 1,300 years old. The Bai's carved houses and spectacular dances are among the most striking cultural motifs, 
but another 12 minorities and several religions also coexist peacefully in the prefecture. While the market in the old part of town is charming, Dali is also a busy modern trading center. Transport and communication infrastructure is well developed. Sugar factories, coal, machinery and construction materials reflect a considerable amount of industrialization. The flow of goods and materials is eased thanks to the new expressway along the Stillwell Road. Dali attracts almost 60,000 foreign tourists a year. As the city of Kunming approaches, so does the end of a 1,079-mile journey on the Stillwell.